Hi friends, today let us discuss the answer for question number 21 that I have given yesterday. So yesterday's question was on case on the Bharati case. The question was given because recently case on the Bharati passed away and uh, the case on the Bharati case has come to the forefront. Read the question, read the question carefully. It says the court's verdict in case on the Bharati case gave birth to the basic structure doctrine that has placed the limitations on the parliament's power to amend the constitution. So, in this question, while reading the answer, you should briefly discuss three aspects. One is, you write the background of what, what is case on the Bharati case in few lines. Then you mention what is basic structure doctrine and try to explain how case on the Bharati case became a broader case and how finally it has kept limitations on the parliament's power to amend the constitution. These three things you should discuss in the answer. Generally, as I told you earlier, in the answers of General Studies Paper 2, particularly the Polity, Constitution of India, it is better before writing the answer, you think about you think about few articles that you can include in the answer. For example, in this question, while writing the answer, you can write Article 13 that has put limitations on the Parliament to amend the fundamental rights. Also, Article 26 you have to mention regarding case from the Bharati case, which gives the freedom to manage religious affairs. In Article 368 which talks about the amending the constitution also you can mention few constitution amendment acts like 42nd constitution amendment act 24th amendment act like this also you can mention if you remember you can mention few other cases along with the case on the party case you can mention few other cases that have dealt a similar matter generally the as the question is analytical your answer should be analytical your answer should exactly address what is asked in the question however writing some facts will fetch more marks to you. Now, let us start from the background. What is case from the Bharati case? We can write it, we can write it as introduction. You can say that case from the Bharati case in 1973, wherein Kesananda Swami, Kesananda Bharati, who was the head of Kerala Mat, who was the head of Kerala Mat, he challenged the Kerala state's land reforms legislation in the Supreme Court. What he said was Article 26 of the Constitution of India, which is one of the fundamental rights, Part 3, clearly gives freedom to manage the religious affairs. It gives freedom to manage the religious affairs. However, this Kerala state's land reform legislation is interfering with this freedom. So, he Ask Supreme Court to nullify, to make this legislation void. However, his lawyer, while arguing the case, along with this particular case, he has brought in another aspects also. For example, 24th Constitution Amendment Act and 25th Constitution Amendment Act and some other acts made by the Parliament, which were again as the fundamental rights. Even those acts were questioned in this case. So. Along with questioning Kerala's land legislation, the lawyer also questioned another similar acts made by the parliament which were again as the fundamental rights. That's why this case has become a very broad case. It went beyond the case around the Bharati case, it, it, it has become a broader case. So that's why in the second part of the second part of the answer, you have to mention, you have to briefly write about other cases which were involved in this case. You can say that Article 13.2 of Constitution of India clearly says that any law that takes away the fundamental rights of citizens of India would be nullified is void. But does this law consist of only ordinary law made by the parliament or it also consists of constitutional amendment act? This was the question. However, this question was cleared by Supreme Court in the Golaknath case 1967. In Golaknath case, Supreme Court clearly mentioned that this law is not only the ordinary law but also constitutional amendment act that means if parliament makes any amendment to the constitution and if that amendment uh, you know takes away the fundamental rights then such an amendment will be nullified is made void so because of this because of this golaknath case immediately the parliament made 24th constitutional amendment act in 1971 in 1971 this 24th CAA 
gave parliament complete powers to amend anything in the constitution that is why even this is questioned under the case on the party case even 25th constitution is also questioned so as a response to all these acts not only this act but also this as a response to all these acts the supreme court has given its judgment in 1973 the famous case of kesar on the bharati in the judgment supreme court said that said that parliament can amend anything in the constitution without changing the basic structure without changing the basic structure parliament can change anything in the constitution of india so it's a landmark judgment now what is this basic structure supreme court in 1973 said that basic structure consists of the fundamental principles of constitution like federalism secularism democracy etc it did not mention all the features it just mentioned few uh, few features in fact the supreme court did not completely give a picture of what do you mean by basic structure however the later cases the later several in several other cases supreme court on a case by case basis on a uh, point by point gradually supreme court has mentioned some other features which will fall under the basic structure for example separation of powers between legislature executive judiciary it also comes under the basic structure even the parliamentary form of government it cannot be changed the rule of law is fundamental even the free and fair elections it also cannot be removed like that few more things were added to this base structure however it is an evolving concept evolving concept in the future case also later on supreme court may bring in new features under this basic structure dot so like that you can say that there were this 1973 case has put limitations on the parliament because now parliament cannot amend everything in constitution while while doing any amendment it has to keep in mind the basic structure dot so in this way you can end the answer in the conclusion what can you write in the conclusion you can conclude in two ways one conclusion you can say that there was criticism again is this case because judges were unelected whereas parliament consists of elected representatives of people how can unelected judges keep limitations on the elected representatives of the people that is a criticism however you can say that this criticism is not valid because constitution is, super, is supreme to anybody constitution is supreme then the legislature or judiciary hence this uh, basic structure doctrine is valid is very important in fact in fact even germany germany after the nazism it has uh, mentioned almost a similar kind of uh, uh, basic structure doctrine wherein the government of germany cannot remove the basic principles of constitution another way you can conclude this answer is you can say that the basic structure doctrine which was proposed propounded in the case on the bharti case was later emphasized and upheld again and again in other cases for example the menonwa mills case which was actually challenging the 42nd constitution amendment act in this case it was upheld again even in the warman rock case 1981 there also supreme court once again upheld the basic structure doctrine and emphasized on that one in that way you can conclude the answer so friends the question for tomorrow 22nd question this is general studies paper 3 environment the international protocols 15 marks question 250 words you have to write the answer in 12 minutes some 10 to 12 minutes and this is a broad question actually in this question i try to include several things what is kyoto protocol how does it you know how does it uh, follow the market based mechanisms and how does it monitor the emission targets and what is the doha amendment to kyoto protocol and i also asked you to compare the kyoto protocol with paris agreement so it's a very broad question so try to write about each aspect in few lines and finish the answer in two and a half pages see you friends bye